is a lender in second position? It, when is it? Oh. When is lending in second position okay to do? And what should a lender do? What should a lender require of the borrower to protect their principal? The best <clears throat> time to be in second it. position is when you're also in first. <laughs> or, or when you know who's in first position and you have the availability or the option to be able to take first position over. Right. Um, it, having a relationship with the first position holder, I think is really, really important, whether it's you or whether it's somebody, you know, not Five to mention is, um, it really bothers me that principal is misspelled. Uh, that's the wrong <laughs> kind of principal, but <laughs> I didn't even notice. Well. <laughs> So good thing he was homeschooling. That, that, that said, <laughs> um, what you should you require from the borrower to make sure that your principal is paid? They make their payments. Yeah. <laughs> you require them to make their payments. I don't know how to answer that, frankly. There's not really anything you can do to guarantee um, other than making sure that your loan to value stays low enough to where if you do have to foreclose, there's enough cushion yeah. to recoup all your money. And that's really important. If you're in second position behind, uh, you know, somebody like us, that's at 70%. If you're in second position behind us, don't go any higher than 75 or 80% in that second position. And even, even 80% is scary to be there because that last 20% can disappear really quickly. Real estate commissions, closing costs, um, unpaid interest, uh, you know, renewal fees, all kinds of things. It can disappear really quick. You know, that said, you're, you're a fly in the ointment if that house is being sold. So you will get your money if it goes into foreclosure, maybe not, but if the house is sold, uh, you're getting money. Yeah. 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 What were you going to say, Jonathan? Well, yeah. So when, when you lend in second position or any, or any junior lien position, you want to look at combined loan to value your CLTV. So you want to take the positions in front of you, add them to whatever amount that you're wanting to potentially lend and see what that total loan to value would be that combined loan to value. Um, you're hundred percent right. Yeah. I mean, when you get above 80% on investment loans, it gets a little scary because mm -hmm. here's the thing. I mean, when you get that high up and you, and you turn a property into a distressed property, that 20% is gone. Right. Um, you know, the reason once a, once a property moves from, from like, um, you know, end user buyer, like retail, and it goes to distressed 10 to 20% of the value is gone. It's, it, it's shaved right off immediately right. because no one wants to pay retail for a distressed property. That's right. Um, and then the other piece would be, I would advise anyone, if you're lending in a junior lien position, only do so if you have the wherewithal to take out the first lien. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do that, you stand the potential of, of losing, you know, being extinguished out through a foreclosure action. I mean, That's nothing's right. worse than, even if you're at a 60% LTV, nothing's worse than the, the first foreclosing and you can't, you can't do anything about it. You have no ability to, um, you know, to, to buy the first out and then it goes to, you know, to sell and it clears the first, you know, it just clears the first lien holders bid amount. Well, now you get nothing. You lost all your money. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, again, you know, if you're lending in second lien position, I would advise only doing so if you have the ability or the wherewithal to take out the first. That's right.